Hi, Mark Sorensen, Chief Investment Officer at Royal Fund Management. It's October 4th. Uh, we're beyond the third quarter, so time for our quarterly market overview. And, and boy, what an ugly third quarter it was, culminating in one of the worst Septembers in a long time. In fact, the worst Dow performance uh, for a month since 2002, and the worst S&P 500 performance since 2008. You know, times like this uh, are a struggle. Uh, in fact, they are times where you have to guard against making emotional decisions and trying to transfer those decisions from your, your heart to your head. In today's video, we're going to show you how to do that by looking at some statistics, some history that show you that better times are, are always to come. Uh, you know, even I have a little gray, more gray hair now, uh, maybe than the beginning of September, uh, but you have to be able to look beyond the current cycle. Before we do that though, I wanna just show a, a current chart uh, to make a couple of points before we go to some other historical data. This is a chart of the S&P 500. We've been coming down uh, most of the year. And finally in June, we had a large rally. In fact, the NASDAQ went up over 23% and the S&P 500 went uh, up about 17, 8%. We've lost all that since then, but I wanna make sure you understand why that happened in the two months from mid June to mid August keeping in mind that the market is a leading indicator. The market is always looking forward. It's looking for when is this uh, cycle end, when things will get better. Back in June, the expectation started to surface that the Fed by September would start to pause uh, and that maybe even by March, we might have cuts in interest rates again. So that's what fueled a huge rally. Uh, when Chairman Powell spoke at Jackson Hole uh, and in subsequent speeches by him and other Fed governors, the market started to realize that rates might have to stay higher for a little longer, and that caused us to give up those gains and come back down. But the overriding point that I want to make in looking at the chart now is that that will happen again. The market being a leading indicator will start to look for better times ahead. Uh, the market will start doing well, even during times of bad news, uh, because the market will look past the current cycle uh, to things improving. You know, as we speak, uh, the Dow Jones is up 780 points here on October 4th. Uh, it was up over 700 points uh, yesterday. That's probably just a good relief balance, uh, rally. We were quite oversold. Uh, meaning the spring was pushed down, so to speak. And when the hand comes off, the market pops very quickly. I want to be candid with you. Uh, we think the bottom is in or very close, but it might not be. But this is the time of year historically when the market does bottom and the extreme pessimism is when a new bu uh, bull market uh, actually begins. Let me show you a chart of 1962, for example, um, and this I've said in previous uh, market commentary video is the bear market that in my opinion kind of resembles more what we're going through right now. It's really interesting that you'll see that we bottomed in June, uh, just like this year uh, until recently, uh, back in 1962. We had a big rally, just like we had from June to August, then we had a retest. Now this year we went down and we actually touched a new low, but just barely so far. But then look what happened from about October, mid-October, um, you know, through August of uh, 63, when the market fully recovered. This is what we expect. The timing of it, we're not sure. But remember, we talked about the fact in previous videos. In fact, there was a video when I said, is it October yet? And you might remember the reason I said that is this is a, a time period we're entering a more promising time period historically for the stock market. For example, in the third year, uh, third fiscal year of a presidential cycle, which started October 1st on a government fiscal year, the market over the next year in the third year of a presidential cycle has averaged 
19.8%. It is the only year of all four of the presidential years that has averaged a double digit return. We've also talked about how the market does after uh, midterm elections, which we're still about a, a month away from, and we'll show you a chart on that as well. But I also want to show you other bear markets where this V bottom or the ultimate recovery, whether it's a, a V bottom or a U bottom, and you'll hear market commentators give them uh, uh, you know, different lettering. Um, but here's a couple of charts that I want to show you that um, will cover you know, other years. So for example, let's go back to 2002. This is the reversal that the market had back in 2002. Remember uh, the early turn of the century uh, known as the tech bubble uh, was a horrible bear market, uh, but there was the recovery uh, when it began in, in 2002. We also mentioned that this is the worst month for the Dow since 2002. And I wanted to make sure you understood something that the worst month for the Dow since 2002, in 2003, the, the market was up 28.18%. Uh, we also mentioned that this is the worst, we had the, just came out of the worst month for the S&P 500 since 2008. In 2009, uh, the S&P 500 was up 2637 so this is not uh, atypical uh, of what happens. Let's show you the, uh, the next chart. Uh, and this is 2008. 2008, also known as the financial crisis, uh, the market turned and you see the big rally uh, that started off of the, of the bottom uh, and the rest was history. Now I wanna talk a little bit about those two years uh, before we look at 2018, the next chart. And that is because a lot of people are comparing this bear market to the tech bubble and the financial crisis. Uh, I've argued that they're not at all the same. We never came uh, from such a, a strong economic position uh, in a bear market as we've been in this time around. Remember back in 2000, 2001, uh, when the market fell so much in the tech bubble, in the NASDAQ 100, the biggest component of that index was Sirius uh, satellite radio. They didn't have earnings then, and they don't have earnings now. Today, the biggest component of the NASDAQ 100 index uh, is Apple, which is a huge company with huge earnings. Of course, we, we know the stock. Uh, so it's nothing like uh, that time frame. I also would argue that this is nothing like 2007, 2008 as other commentators have uh, compared it to. Uh, back then we had a real estate crisis. Uh, we had a financial crisis that actually caused a real estate crisis. In fact, I actually read that there were govern government officials back then that said we were only four days uh, from actual financial collapse. Remember that's when uh, Lehman Brothers went down. We had, uh, you know, Bank America had to buy Merrill Lynch. Uh, a lot of banks either went out of business or uh, even the government was encouraging stronger banks to buy the weaker banks. Uh, this was a dreadful time. Uh, the real estate market collapsed. This time, the real estate market is slowing because of higher interest rates, but prices are not expected to come down much. Uh, they're expected to plateau. And that's because there's sti still a shortage of housing compared to the amount of demand unlike 2007, 2008. So we would argue that this bear market still is coming from a period of strength in the economy that is unlike 2001 and 2008, which is why we feel like the, the bottom is near in. And even if we go a little lower, we are closer to the bottom. And as I said, entering that time frame when the market typically does a lot better. Uh, the next chart I want to show you is 2018. This is the reversal back in 2018. And that's why you've heard me say in the past, past that you have to be there for when the market turns uh, or you'll miss it. And it creates tremendous opportunity costs because the market rally can sometimes be just as aggressive as was uh, the downturn. 2018 is a great example of that. And you might remember this was also 
the end of a Fed tightening cycle, where in December of 2018, the Fed finally decided that they would pause and it started a huge rally um, into the, uh, you know, into the next year, 2019. Uh, we've talked about time frames in terms of the um, uh, the mid the uh, the midterm election. Sorry for the pause. Uh, so I wanted to show you that uh, this is an example of why we said not only is the time frame of the third fiscal year of a presidential cycle where the market from October 1st this year to uh, September 30th, the following that third year of the presidential cycle is averaged 19.8%. Uh, the other thing is midterms. Like we've had a, a, a horrible market experience in the last six months, the market is sometimes not very good the six months before midterm elections, but is especially good historically the six months after midterm elections. And here's example, an example going back to 1962. You'll notice that the uh, I put on this chart the performance uh, from basically midterm elections. The chart says from November 1st, three months, six months, and a year uh, after the midterm election starting November 1st. And one thing I want to uh, point out to you here uh, is that if the one year return after midterms has averaged 16.3%, and by the way, never had a down year, uh, a year after midterms, um, the six month has averaged 15.1, the three months 7.1. So a major point here in terms of how fast the market recovers during these stages. 15.1% in six months, is the bulk of the return, the one year return, which is average 16.3. So that's why you said you've got to risk that we're not quite at bottom. So you're there when it turns because most of the, the one year return comes in the first six months. Six months and one year after presidential midterm uh, or midterm elections, congressional midterm elections, since 1962, uh, both six months and one year We've never been down. So I wanted to talk a little bit about these statistics as we move forward, because if you make emotional decisions with your money now uh, and not think with your head in terms of historical data and, and facts over time, uh, that could create a lot of opportunity cost. You know, it's interesting. I, I went back and did a little work on uh, what happened in 2002, 2008. 2018, if you would have sold at the top in 2002, the Dow Jones was 11,425. Well, by 2008, it got to 14,198. Now, I'm not saying that you sold at the bottom. I'm saying even if you sold at the top and missed the down move. In 2008, if you would have sold at 14,198, which was the top at that time. Granted, we went down to about 6,500 on the Dow. But even if you sold at the top in 2008 at 14,198, in, by 2018, the Dow Jones was almost 30,000 uh, at, at 29,951. In 2018, the market retreated back to about 21,700. But even if you sold at the top, at 29,955, as you know, at the end of the last of last year, the Dow Jones reached as high as 36,000 uh, uh, on the on the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So, what's the point I'm making? The point is, if you're an investor, if you have a year or two or three years or four or five years or longer, you should not be concerned about the occasional bear market. I've been through this several times in my 40 plus year career. Uh, I personally have never sold. Uh, I respect that it's an emotional time and it's hard to uh, avoid those decisions of the heart. But when you look at that history, at the potential opportunity cost, uh, trying to uh, look past the current cycle, know that just like August or excuse me, June to August of this year, when the market rallied significantly, 
as it started to look past uh, the current hiking cycle, the same will happen again. And we think the market would be much higher, just like previous times in, in history, uh, given some time. Now, I, again, I'll be candid. If you don't have more than six months or a year, if the money you have invested is money that you plan to buy a new car or a house with in the next six months to a year, uh, then maybe you should take advantage of the next rally uh, and not be invested, not be taking risk. But if you have longer than a one year time horizon, we would encourage you uh, to stay focused. Look at the data that I just put. Watch this video more than once if you have to. Uh, be encouraged what, by what happens historically uh, once the market starts to look beyond this cycle uh, and things improve. Um, it's October now. We're finally into the first quarter. We're into that uh, better timing for stocks historically. Stay patient. We still believe that you will be rewarded. One more comment, and that is of you, that's for those clients uh, of ours uh, that are in 401k maneuver, uh, which is our 401k participant account management program. Every quarter, we've been rebalancing those accounts. We've been managing risk. Uh, trying to be where the momentum is uh, and those accounts have held up, your accounts have held up uh, better than the market generally. I also want to remind you that those of you that still have several years to work, you should almost be happy that the market is down because you are buying more shares now with the same amount of dollars than you were buying when the market was higher. That is called dollar cost averaging, buying more shares when the market's lower less shares when the market's higher, and that builds wealth over time. So everyone have a wonderful fall, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.